here in the United States. So our first all-star made in America, which of course is very exciting. And it really encompasses our uh, sort of three brand pillars of the pure progressive performance. Welcome back to Plug and Play V. I'm Steve, and in this video, we'll be looking at the Polestar 3, considering its specs, having looked over it at a recent visit to the Polestar space in Boston. Does it uh, cut the mustard? Is it going to be an EV that's going to be desirable for a wide range of people, or stuck to those niche premium EVs? Let's dive in to look at the Polestar 3. So let's start with some specs. Uh, it's fairly simple in terms of trim level. It's starting off with uh, long range models only, both with dual motors with the one extra trim level being a performance model. So at the entry level with just a long range non-performance, you're going to be looking at a 380 kilowatt motor, which will deliver 489 horsepower and 620 pound feet of torque. Upgrade to that performance edition and you're still at 380 kilowatts but the horsepower will go up to 507, and you're looking at 671 pound-feet of torque. Both will top out at 130 miles per hour, but on the base long range, you're going to be looking at 300 miles EPA, and the Performance Edition uses that extra power, so it takes it down to 270 miles EPA. Both of these pulling from a 400 volt architecture, 111 kilowatt hour capacity battery pack. So equal on that level, just that performance uh, taking the extra to uh, deliver its slightly better 0 to 60 time, which is 4.6 seconds for the performance model and 4.9 seconds for the non-performance model. Everything else that we'll be looking at on this car as we go around it has the exact same uh, things in terms of dimensions, features, and that will be the Polestar 3 long range. And let's just take a look around this vehicle. So with that active air suspension, you're looking at uh, lowering the ride at higher speeds to improve aerodynamics, raising it a little bit to improve comfort around more local roads. And this is a uh, essentially a premium SUV. So you're looking at uh, a full hatch, the elongated kind of half SUV, half wagon body shape, and a futuristic kind of accent to a lot of these areas around the front. On the hood, just in front of the front, you've got little gaps which uh, perform a kind of scoop for aerodynamics, we assume. And then around the car, you're seeing these little accents that uh, Polestar has become well known for. To make quite an attractive package, it has to say, it's striking, it's not gonna look like anything else on the road, where the Polestar 2 did have uh, some kind of unique design cues and uh, follows some of that uh, Volvo styling. This does, but it also departs a step again, uh, inserting some Polestar design aesthetics to make it even more different than most of the other SUVs you're going to see on the road. So there is a lot to like in terms of the uh, design aesthetics. It brings a lot of that uh, quality that you feel from a Volvo into an EV only brand and then bakes everything in with native Android Auto, which as a system does have a very good UI and does give you that kind of a smooth Android experience, which is a step above the Android Auto experience you're going to get in regular vehicles. 
So looks are good. Uh, Polestar EV platform is solid. Engineering is going to be good. We know Polestar performance is compelling and generally one of those electric vehicles that is going to ride really well, have great quality inside and deliver a good driving experience. So why is there hesitation in my voice perhaps? It's really down to the price tag. The regular edition non-performance is coming in uh, just below $84,000 at uh, 83900 And then if you spec up to the performance edition for those marginal improvements in uh, zero to 60 time and power, you're gonna be all the way up to $89,900. So that's not quite a six figure car, but uh, without being able to qualify for the federal tax credit as it stands, not the least because Polestar is not uh, assembled in North America, although we do believe that uh, the Polestar 3 will be assembled over here and we'll have that part of it covered. The problem is that it won't qualify at the current pricing levels for the federal tax incentive. So you are looking at what is essentially an $85,000, $90,000 car in its uh, regular trim level uh, and then you can spec it up with different uh, materials and uh, interior trims you can get pretty close uh, and actually i managed to get past on the configurator in the polestar space one hundred thousand dollars so that puts it into areas that are competing with very luxury premium brands now polestar has been kind of positioned to some extent as that the performance electric vehicle arm of an already premium brand with the volvo design cues so there's no denying that it should be on the upper end of the spectrum but when you consider some of the likes of uh, the Ionic 5 would be one obviously a little biased with that but the EV6 and then more competitively with uh, Polestar perhaps the Genesis labels uh, you're looking at potentially a ten to fifteen thousand dollar disparity at least for the upper ends of those brands to the base Polestar 3. So again this isn't to be overly critical this is early days and there's still a lot more that could come out about this car but looking around it I wasn't getting any sense that anything was jumping out the range is acceptable but not uh, stellar by any means getting up to that 300 miles mark but really not outperforming something like the mustang mach -E and the longer range versions of those kia hyundai genesis egmp cars and then the performance is again acceptable it's clearly good to have a sub five seconds zero to 60 time but you're not beating anything like the ionic 5 which again is looking at twenty thousand dollars cheaper even if you get up to the uh, spicier versions of the kia ev6 gt and the Hyundai Ionic 5N, which is upcoming, those are going to be outperforming the uh, Polestar 3 by at least a second, zero to 60, and probably more. So you're you're not getting the performance aspect, which is fine. This is a premium SUV. It's not supposed to blow your head off, but uh, it's hard to then see where you're fitting into the market. What is the selling point? Is it that it's uh, super premium? It certainly has a premium feel to it, but you are expecting that once you get uh, approaching, creeping up on six figures. It's not on an 800 volt architecture so you don't have any future proof technology um, the charging is going to be adequate uh, saying 10 to 80 percent in 30 minutes which again with 111 kilowatt hour pack is pretty respectable but it's not going to blow the socks off anything like a tesla or uh, one of the egmp cars again so we are looking at this kind of uh, repeated pattern of it's acceptable but not exceptional and with the price tag of that $85,000, $90,000, you really want something exceptional. So you're falling back into the, it's got to be sold on the Polestar brand. It's something that uh, looks different, unique in terms of looks and aesthetics. It uh, doesn't really have any peers in that sense. The, everything else is, uh, that's on the market right now is a little more traditional. But it really is going to have to deliver more than the sum of its parts. The tech specs, the performance specs, all of the things will have to come together into a package that delivers. Uh, more than it looks on paper to justify that relatively high price tag or the price will have to come down if you talk about it in terms of if they can make it meet the requirements of the federal tax credit and get it underneath that eighty thousand dollar price point then it starts to become much more competitive you start to get into the lower 70s or mid 70s and it starts to gel with some of the competition that it has there especially in that kind of genesis line of uh, premium electric vehicles so it'll be interesting to see how quickly Polestar gets this to market and what they lean into for the uh, advertising and the unique value proposition of the Polestar 3 once it hits the market. For now, it was good to get a look at it. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, look around the car. Let us know what you think down uh, below. Are we underselling the quality and the uh, levels that Polestar has achieved here or is it just another premium electric vehicle that's going to hit the market uh, too expensive? Let us know down in the comments. Thanks for watching as always and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.